Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Praise the Lord, saints, praise the Lord. <laughs> so, um, today I just want to give some encouraging words to somebody, anybody, uh, to my brother in Christ, to my sister in Christ, to the children of God, to not lose hope, to hang on. I don't care if you're hanging on by a little thread. I don't care if you're hanging on by a strand of hair. I don't care if you barely hanging on, but I just want to encourage you to continue to hang on, to never give up, never lose hope. Do not throw your towel in. Child of God, listen to me. Do not throw your towel in. I don't know who you are, but it's just so heavy in my spirit. I just want to encourage you to not give up. And if you are battling, if you're in a season of where you feel like that you that you feel like you want to quit, if the devil is whispering in your ear to quit, give up, throw the towel in, it's not going to get easy. I'm just here to tell you on today that the devil is a liar. You tell Satan to get behind you and get up under your feet. And if that's you, this message tonight is for you. This message is for you. We're going to get some victory on today. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage whoever you are to just don't quit. Don't quit. The enemy is telling you to give up. The enemy is telling you to throw in the towel. The enemy is telling you that it ain't going to get better. But it's a lie. He lied from the, from the beginning. Nothing he says is true. Nothing he ever will say will be true. Just don't. Do not quit. Hang on to dear life. If you got to call a woman of God, a man of God, if you got to call your pastor and tell him what, what, what you're dealing with, tell him, you know, that you feel like quitting, you need somebody to pray with you, you can email me. We can pray the prayer of faith. Amen. And we're going we gonna to see God working. We're going to get the victory on today. Okay. Amen. Praise God. So, um... Faith in God can wear your enemy out. Like I just said, we are we are children of God and we don't quit. You need to take quitting and you need to take I give up off the table because that shouldn't even be in our vocabulary. We shouldn't even, even be looking in that direction and quitting direction, direction. We shouldn't even be looking in the direction of quit. We shouldn't even have quit mode on. It shouldn't even, we shouldn't even be reaching for the switch to quit. Okay. As children of God, we can't quit. We can't give up. We have to go all the way. I don't know about you, but I told God, yes, I told God to the day I die. And I meant that. And I mean that to the saving of my soul. So let's just get into this lesson because I feel good in my spirit. And I know somebody needs to hear this message because like the enemy told me, it ain't going to get better. But the devil is a lie. I'm standing here with the victory on today. I'm in my right mind. God gave me the victory over the devil. And you can have the victory too. Luke 10 and 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and over scorpions and over all the works of the enemy. He said all the works. So I just want to tell you on today, we're going to get the victory. You have the victory. You have to believe that. And you have to know that. Amen. Praise God. So faith in God can wear your enemy out. Just like the woman and the unjust judge. Oh, uh, let's go to Luke 18 and 8. And uh, Jesus starts out speaking in Luke 18. He was speaking a parable saying to this end, men ought to always pray and not faint. Men ought to always pray. Children of God, you ought to always pray. Never give up. Never lose hope. Never throw in a towel. So about a quick testimony. So about like a week and a half ago, um, I kept hearing in the spirit, when the son of man cometh. Will he find faith on the earth? I kept hearing it day and night. I kept hearing it while I ate. I kept hearing it while I changed the baby diaper. I kept hearing it while I was putting clothes in the washing machine, putting them in the dryer. Like I kept hearing it and hearing it. And it got so heavy to the point to where I started repeating it out loud. Shall the son of, when the son of man come and shall he find faith on earth? And I'm like, Lord, what does this mean? Like I kept hearing it and I'm like, Lord, what does this mean? And so transparent moment, this season, you know, we all go through seasons. Some seasons are good. Some seasons are bad, but this season that I'm in right now, 
I'm in a faith season. God is building up my faith like never before. Like God, and I thank God for that. God is strengthening my faith. God is, you know, taking me higher in him. And I love it so much, you know. Uh, we know our trials and the tribulations that we go through, they shape us and I, they mold us in Christ. So, um, like David said, it was good that I was afflicted. Like, I thank God for my trials and tribulations. Let's just talk about this faith that the uh, the widow woman had. What kind of faith did this woman have? And God revealed to me the type of faith that she had. She was persistent. Unjust judge said, I fear not God, nor nor regard man. That man, that means he didn't care what nobody said. He did, he wasn't even scared of God's judgment. He didn't care what God said. He didn't care what nobody said. Man, nobody. So you know he was pretty bold. He was pretty bad at all to not even fear God. Whoa, yeah, he was pretty bad off. Before Jesus even spoke in his parable, when he started off, he said, he said to them, to this end, that men ought to always pray and not faint. He was telling us before he got into the parable, the type of faith that the widow woman had. She never gave children of God. That's how we have to be. We have to, pre we have to be persistent in our walk. We have to have that persistent type of faith. We got to have that faith that we're hanging on to dear life. We cannot give up. We cannot throw in the towel. Now, what if that woman, this widow woman, would have threw the towel in? Her adversary would have still been after her. And that's how that's how we are in the spirit. That's how we are children of God because our adversary is the devil. The word of God tells us to be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because our adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So we have to have this type of faith that the widow woman had, the persistent type of faith, the not quitting faith. We got to always pray and not faint. No matter what you're doing, when you're driving, you can pray. When you're at work, you can pray. When you're on the phone talking, you can pray. When, you, when you're talking to somebody else, you can pray. You can always have a prayer on your heart, a prayer in your mind. Amen. Yeah. The devil, he wants he wants you to give up because it's so easy. It's the easiest thing to do. He doesn't want you to fight for your life. We know that giving up can be really easy. When the devil tried to tempt us with giving up, when the devil tried to tempt us with throwing in the towel, it's so easy to be like, man, I quit. I can't do this. I give up. That's what he wants us to do. But if you're holding on for dear life and you're fighting, you can't tell me that God is not going to step in on your on your behalf. The word of God tells us when the enemy comes in like, like a flood, God will raise up a standard against him. God is on your side. God is fighting for you, child of God. First Timothy six and First Timothy six and twelve says, "Fight the good fight of faith." Oh man, this blessed my soul. Um, maybe two years ago, I had a revelation about this scripture. Uh, I was dealing with something. I was going through a trial, and this this scripture stuck with me for the longest and it still do it still does but it helped me get through this that trial that that i was in but first timothy 6 and 12 said fight the good fight of faith now there's something when you fighting but it's a good fight you know most people uh i don't know about y'all i can just speak for myself and i put it like this if i was a fighter out in the world you best believe i'm gonna fight in the spirit too and um, so God teaches me, the Holy Ghost teaches me how to fight. Now, we know we don't fight flesh and blood because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. So our fight, we don't fight flesh and blood. We fight in the spirit realm. And the Holy Ghost teach us, teach us about this. So that's why I like this scripture. Uh, Paul was telling Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. That's why I tell you. That's why I just said we cannot give up. We have to lay hold of eternal life. And I just want you to know if you're fighting, know that it is a good fight. Because when you cross that finish line, oh, you're going to have the victory. We have the victory over here in Christ Jesus. We have the victory. Paul said fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and have professed 
a good profession before many witnesses. It is so easy to tuck, tell, and run. And that's what the devil wants us to do. He just wants us to tuck, tell, and run. He wants to present fear to you. He wants to um try to get you to be so scared to where you don't even want to fight or you can't even fight. Hebrews 10 and 39 tell us we are not of them that draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of our soul. So we don't turn back. We don't go back into the world. We don't quit. We don't just run and give up when it's hard. We are those that believe to the saving of our soul. We don't have I quit in us. I told you at the beginning, you take I quit off the table. You take I, you take I quit, I give up. Out the little checkbox, it's not even on A, B, C. It's not even an option. It's not A, it's not B, it's not C, it's not D. It ain't even E, okay? When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he did not tuck tail and run. And I pondered on this for a while when God revealed this to me. What would, what would it have been like if Jesus would have took tail and ran when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, we know when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he had the cup of sin and he said, Father, is there any other way? Is there any other way that I can bypass all of this? And you know, my mind got to thinking, Okay, Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane. He sees this cup of all the sins of the world. Now, what if Jesus would have ran out the garden, down the street, was hiding behind some trees and was like, Lord, I can't do this. I'm just so scared. I'm just, I can't. And now you know that he was tempted with fear at this time in the garden of Gethsemane because he is facing all the sins of the world. He has to become all the sins of the world. My sins, your sins, everybody's sins of the world. But what did Jesus say? I'm getting excited. <laughs> what did Jesus say in the Garden of Gethsemane? He said, nevertheless. Not my will, but your will, Father. He said, I must be about my Father's business. We must follow this same example that Jesus did when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, man. I just got, man, I got so excited when I was uh, visualizing all of this in my head. What would it have looked like? I just want you to think about that for a minute. Let's take a little, little tangent right quick. What would it have looked like if Jesus would have ran away and got scared and said, God, I know you sent me here to do this, to redeem man back unto you, but I can't do this. What if Jesus would have said that? We wouldn't have hope today. There would be no reason for us living. You hear me? We would, there would be no reason for me doing this video right now. There would be no reason for me coming here to telling you, don't give up, child of God. There would be no reason for me encouraging you to hang on for dear life. There would be no reason for me telling you to be like the widow woman, to have persistent faith. There would be no reason for none of this. Our living would just be in vain. Oh, but I thank God. I thank God that God said, nevertheless... Oh, Jesus, if you just sit there and think about Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane when he said, nevertheless, oh, it was over with then. He went and he uh, went and woke up um, his disciples. He was like, I can't even get y'all to pray for an hour. He, and then he was like, come on, let's just go. It's done. Let's just go. They finna come and get me. I done already prayed to my father. Let's do this. Let's go. Man, just sit there and think about that for a minute. If Jesus would have ran out that garden and said, God, I can't do this. That's, this is too much. Our living would be in vain. But that's thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God because he said, nevertheless, we couldn't have done this. We couldn't have done it. We needed Jesus to come and redeem us back to God. Amen. So, Every day, we're striving to be like Christ every day. So we must follow this example. We must follow this type of persistent faith that Jesus had in his father. He said, nevertheless, 
Not my will, but your will be done. Amen. Satan knows if you get in the gym, child of God, that gym, which is the word of God, your sword. Satan knows if you get in the gym and get strong and start exercising that faith. Listen to what I'm saying now because we about to dig a little deep right here. Satan knows if you get in the gym, the word of God, and get strong and start exercising that faith, then you are going to be able to do some damage and turn his kingdom down. As children of God, that should be our goal and our mission every day to tear Satan's kingdom down because he's he's building the kingdom because he's know his time he know his time is short. Okay, so that should be our goal every single day when we wake up. Satan, I'm coming to tear your kingdom down. Amen. John 6 and 48. Let's go to John 6 and 48. I hope you brought your Bibles to the session because we, we read in the word today. Okay. And I love this. When God when God showed me this in the, in the word last week. Y'all, it blessed my socks off. It blessed my socks off. And I hope it blessed your socks off too. John 6 and 48 says, I, and I love it. It's so short and it's so strong. Woo. John 6 and 48 says, I am that bread of life. I'm going to read that again. I am that bread of life, period. John 6 and 48 says, this is all John 6 and 48 says. I am that bread of life. And when God took me to this, to this word, I could not move past for the verse 48. I am that bread of life. I would read on and I will go back to verse. Oh, verse 48, I am that bread of life. I will keep reading and I will go back to verse 48. I am that bread of life. I'm like, Lord, why is this sticking out to me? Like, I am that bread of life. Jesus was telling his disciples, I am that bread of life. I want you, I want you to just let this soak and sit in and marinate right quick. <sighs> just break this down really quick. Because it's a lot that happened between verse 48 and uh, the point that I'm trying to make. But Jesus was in the temple. He was speaking to them. He was telling them, if you eat my flesh, drink my blood, you will have eternal life. And so the disciples, they was like, man, these are hard teachers. Like, ain't nobody going to be able to get what he's saying. Like, how can we eat his flesh and drink his blood? You know, they had a carnal mind. And so Jesus was saying, he said, do this offend you? And so um, they said, what? And Jesus was like, do this opinion. He said, what if ye shall see the Son of Man ascended up? He said, it is the spirit that quicketh the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there were some of you that don't believe. And so Jesus knew this from the beginning. And so the disciples, they was like, you know, this is just, he's just too harsh, like, this is just too hard. So they left. They didn't follow Jesus anymore. And so then Jesus looked at the 12. He said, will you go also? And when I read this, I kind of choked up because I could just see Jesus. People, the people then left or whatever. And Jesus, he looking at the 12. He's like, so you going to leave too? Like, you let me know. Like, wait, like y'all going to leave too? <laughs> so Jesus said, well, will ye also go? This is the point that I'm getting at. Jesus said, I am that bread of life. And then Peter answered and said, um, in verse 68, he said, Lord, where shall we go? You have the words of eternal life and we believe and we are sure. Listen to what Peter said. He said, we believe and we are sure that you are that Christ. Oh, glory to God. That Christ, the son of the living God. And you might be saying, okay, Pooh, what is the point that you're trying to get? This is the point that I'm trying to get. This, it is something about the word that. T-H-A-T. 
I love it because this is how the Holy Ghost broke it down to me. He said the word that is a specific kind. Jesus said in verse 48, I want you to keep playing this over in your head. Verse 48, Jesus said, I am that bread of life. Simon Peter said, Jesus, we believe and we are sure that you are that Christ, the son of the living God. The word that, T-H-A-T, it's a certain kind. It's the right one. No doubt in our mind, We Peter just said, we believe and we are sure that you are that Christ. And I look at it like this. Um, this is the example that I had in my head. We're looking for a car. We scout out for a car. We go to the car dealership. We're searching the car lot. We're looking at all these nice cars that we like. But when we find that one, T-H-A-T, when we find that car that we like, we put our finger on, we say, yeah, that's the one. The, the man, the salesman, the saleswoman come out, ma'am, do you know what you're looking for? Yeah, I found that one. I want that one right over there. Bring me that one right over there. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see the point that I'm trying to make here? Amen. Praise God. So Jesus said, I am that bread of life. Peter said, we believe and are sure that you are that Christ, the son of the living God, the son of the living God. He said, where are we going? Where are we going to go? You are that Christ. And I just want to encourage you on today that Jesus is that one. Jesus is the one that you need to be seeking. Jesus is the one that you need to be looking to. Look to the hills from which cometh your help because our help comes from the Lord. Our help comes from Jesus. Jesus is that one. Let me tell you, you can build your whole life on this word. You can build your whole life on Jesus. You can. And I just want to encourage you on today, child of God, man of God, my brother in Christ, my sister in Christ, to not give up. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Be just like the widow woman. The unjust judge said, man, I got to, I'm tired of looking at her. I, I am tired of looking at this woman. She come in here every single day. That means if I don't give, if I don't avenge her now, she's going to keep coming here and I'm tired of her. I'm tired of looking at her. Y'all, we have to be the same way like the woman, like the widow woman. We have to be just like that widow woman, having that same faith, having that persistent faith, not quitting, not losing heart, not giving up. This is not the time to quit, child of God. You are strong. You do have the victory. We win over here. We win in Christ Jesus. Okay, we win. Don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Keep your faith strong in God. And I'm telling you, like I said, Satan knows if you, when you get in that word and you get strong, Satan knows if you go to the gym and start working out, you get strong, right? Look at the word of God, so to say, as the gym. Start going in there. Second Timothy 2 and 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed. Rightly divide the word of truth. Get into the gym. This is a workout. Start exercising that faith. <laughs> Just like the widow woman. When I tell you she exercised that faith every single day, day and night, the scripture tells us day and night, she didn't quit. She had persistent faith. She didn't throw the towel in. She didn't give up. She didn't have I quit in her vocabulary. She did not have I can't do this on the paper. She didn't have that in her mind. She got up every single day and got before that unjust judge. And then what happened? Look at the type of faith that the widow woman had. The judge said, man, I got to get up out of my face. This woman come here every single day. And he said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? When Jesus appeared, will he find this same type of faith that the widow woman had? Will you have that same type of faith like the widow woman when Jesus come back? What that tells us, we got to keep on going, saints. We can't give up. We can't throw in the towel. We have to have the same type of faith like she had. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man coming, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find that same type of persistent faith like the widow woman had? 
That's a question that you need to ask yourself. That's something you need to remind yourself every single day. I got to be just like the widow woman. I can't throw in a towel. I can't have I quit in my vocabulary. You as a child of God, you can't give up. You cannot quit. Amen. Praise God. We got to be just like, I don't know about y'all, but I am, I am striving to be just like the widow woman. Like I said, this season, God is building up my faith. I'm in the gym. I'm working now. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I'm in that gym. I'm exercising my faith in God because my, I know where my, I know my redeemer live. I know my savior lives. I know all my hope and all my faith and all my trust is in God. I have no choice but to keep fighting. I have no choice but to keep on going. I have no choice but to be like the widow woman. Every day, day and night, she was going before the judge, the unjust judge. This man did not fear God. This man didn't care what nobody said. This was a bad man. This man was bad, okay? He didn't fear God. What? That man, he didn't care about nothing. He didn't care what you said. He didn't care if you needed help. But he said, this woman is coming here day and night. I'm tired of looking at her. Then he said, and I will not, and he will not for a while. But after a while, he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect? That's you. You are the chosen ones. That's you. Put your name right there. Shall God not avenge Deasia? Shall God not avenge Pooh? Insert your name right there when you read that, okay? Because God, he cares for you. Jesus cares for you. So let's read that again. And shall God not avenge Deasia, which cried day and night unto him, though he will bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man is coming, shall he find faith on the earth amen and like i said earlier i just kept hearing that in the spirit when the son of man comes, shall he find faith on the earth and when god revealed this to me a couple of days later i said oh now i get it i got to have that same type of faith like the widow woman god you are teaching me to have this same type of faith like the widow woman what kind of faith is that persistent faith never giving up faith Throwing, I quit, I can't off the table. I need to be just like this widow woman. God, I thank you for revealing that to me. And I'm just coming to tell you here on today, have that same type of faith like the widow woman. Don't lose hope. Don't quit. Strive to be just like this widow woman every single day. Because I'm telling you, God, he will give you the strength and he will help you in your weakness. Amen. Amen. And I just pray that each and every one of you be blessed. Continue to uh, pray for me as I pray for you. And as always, be blessed.